So after we went to Tamar, we headed north to a river beach. I'll put the name here, it's Agrol, Agrol River Beach. I don't know why it's called a river beach because there's not actually any beach there, but mm -hmm. it's kind of a river that they've dammed off. Dammed. Yeah, we try and make a habit of stopping somewhere for a swim. We like a swim and it's just to douse the dog off in the hot weather. It's getting a little bit cooler here now, but if the sun's in the sky, it does get quite hot, especially when she's in the boot traveling around. So it looked very nice on the pictures and it didn't disappoint it. When we got there, it had a nice water wheel as well. Area's dammed off with a nice little swimming spot. The river just down from it. It'll give you some information about how and where the water flowed from and to and the difference around in rivers. And yeah, that was a nice little spot with a couple of little different cafes there and some outside seating area, so... We actually headed mid-week, but it was still quite busy, wasn't it? Mm. Um, it was just after dinner time and the cafe was pretty much full. There was quite a few people swimming, so I can imagine in the summer mm. it's a very popular spot. Mm -hmm. Probably too busy for what we would kind of like. But with it being out of season, the actual change rooms and toilets were closed. So I'm, I'm surprised there was that many people there. But mm. if you are in the area, I would recommend going because we, we enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So just west from the swimming spot and from Tamar is Fatima. So we've been once before earlier in the year, but my um, mum wanted to go back. She'd heard some good things about it. Someone she knew had recommended it. So we headed there. When we first went, it was quite quiet. And it was just Scott and I. Um, so it was interesting to see it with a bit more atmosphere wasn't there was a lot more people it's coming up to the time of the year when um a lot of people do their pilgrimages there so there we've was... seen a lot of people walking on the roads when we were driving here and there especially on the road from Fatima to Coimbra and when we were just dotting around Coimbra itself around the train station I think most people must get a train into Coimbra and then do their pilgrimage from there so if anybody can confirm that leave it in the comments so there was a lot of people with high visas on and when we got there, like I say, there was notably a lot more people and the courtyard was quite full. And Lots of tents set up because that's what people do. They kind of come in, they come for the week and they set the tents up. Mm -hmm. All the picnic tables were full, big families having big meals, sharing mm -hmm. them outside. It was mm -hmm. really interesting to see. Just a little stop off, which was what we did and then we headed down to... We headed north to Pombal. Pombal. Uh, a place where Scott and I hadn't been before. I found it on the map in some of the, the books that our landlady recommended. Um, it's got quite a lot of history, also linked to the Templar again, mm -hmm. so it was quite interesting to go. There was a nice castle. Castle was nice, um, nice. Set up on the hill. Point. It was built by the Knights Templar. Yeah. Um, and then we just went down and had a little wander through the town, didn't we? Yeah. It's one of the first constructions by the Templars back in the 12th century. And yeah, that was it was really interesting to see and give you some sort of information on different castles in the vicinity or in the region that had been taken by the Templars. There's some videos in the in the information in the castle, wasn't there, to give you a rundown of the local history. And yeah, it was really well done. It was well kept through the tourism Portugal. They, they kept the castle in good order and you go right up to the top turret and see the view across Pombal. The square had been done up, which had art and stuff in square, didn't it, at the time when we, we were went? We were a bit late. It's late in the day. So a lot of things were starting to close. Sort of that time between few... places closing and, and restaurants, restaurants opening, opening, about five, six o'clock, so there wasn't much open, but... but I think there's a few muse museums and art galleries that you could visit if you were mm. interested. A few nice churches in the square, and yeah, Pombal was nice. I think more so for the castle. If you're just going for a pastry and a coffee, I think it's worth having a look into and definitely have a look at the castle there. Decided that we'd have one day out and one day chill. So the following day we just chilled around the accommodation and the day after that we planned to visit Lusa. 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 This is Jen's masterwork. It was one of our favourite spots for this trip I think wasn't it? Lusa. Yeah. I kind of had two places written down, Lusa or Luzo, to visit. They're both different directions, but when I looked into it more closely that Lusa has these schist villages, which is right up our street. It's kind of Portugal's answer to the Cotswolds, or these little tiny mm. slate villages that you can visit. Portugal's actually home to about 27 schist villages all around the country. Beautiful. But five of them are located just outside Lusa, the mm. Serra, de, Serra de Lusa. Right in the mountains. So yeah, so we headed to Lusa, which has a nice castle again. There's a nice swimming spot down there. Um, so you can park at the castle, 
and walk all the way down to the swimming spot along to the churches and there's a nice little walking route and a lot of people from there you can actually walk to several of the different villages but we decided that we were going to take the car mm -hmm. and i think it was probably a good idea yeah it was would just have been for a timing lot of walking. yeah would have been a lot of walking very mountainous if you're into your hiking and be great to do some hiking we did it by the car we'd had a couple of long days going out around other places so we took the car around the, the different villages and like I say you would you would need to literally start first thing on a morning and last thing on the day wouldn't you to yeah. do three or four of the villages because is, it is quite a bit of walking between the trails and I imagine it being quite a high elevation as well. Roads are very windy and you're up on a 20 degree incline when you climb into these different villages but when you get there they are really picturesque aren't they? Mm -hmm. Lovely nice slate construction obviously they've used the what they've had to hand in the mountains that's come from the mountains to build the houses with and i imagine there's some sort of law to say that all houses need to be built the same because all the houses look very similar nice round wood constructed balconies and uh, wooden doors and stuff like that just really set it off to a nice quaint feel and the views from where they're built right on the mountainside is pretty spectacular as well. I should have had the drone, I didn't, so I haven't got any drone shots, but I'm sure you could find them somewhere online. I think we'll be back, or we'll be visiting the other ones, definitely. There's well, some in the Serra di Estrella, so I think we'll definitely mm. try and visit them over the next couple of months as well. Yeah, but we would definitely recommend it. You could spend a day there. There's a few that have restaurants as well, and you can stop for refreshments. And yeah, nice day out. These villages were kind of inhabited in the 20th century and then kind of were just left to rack and ruin. People kind of moved into the cities to get better jobs and just left these villages behind. But the, the government and the EU produced some money for the tourism to- Initiatives. Initiative to, for the infrastructure to help repopulate these villages as a tourism. So there's a few of them that are very popular that have obviously had a lot more money spent on them and there's not any if a few ruins there. And then there's a few other ones which are still up and coming on. There's yeah. a few buildings done. So if anybody's looking for a little holiday rental, it is, uh, <laughs> it's worth looking there because I think it is an up, up and coming place. And like I say, it's, it's a beautiful place to either go and visit, spend some holidays or just visit for the day. So that was our, definitely our favourite place wasn't it looser visiting all the schist villages yeah yeah i'd say it was one of our favorite spots it's a little bit further inland so we were already heading eastward from coimbra inland and it's another 20 minutes on top of where we were staying so that's 40 minutes from coimbra so you're heading it's probably going to be about an hour over an hour from the coast from from looser isn't it but you're out there you're in the mountains and it's it's really nice area they do recommend that, obviously, to go from Coimbra, there's the train links you can get to there from Lisbon, Porto, all over. But they do recommend that you hire a car once you get there because they haven't got the infrastructure yet from Coimbra to kind mm. of bring the tourism there. Mm. Um, but I think a lot of people will rent accommodation there in some of these villages and then travel around. There's lots of bike tours and things like that so you can travel around the different villages and explore them over a couple of days. When you went into the tourist information actually had advertisement for a few walking tours and I think there was some e-bike tours as well wasn't there there if you... And Land Rover tours. Land Rover tours if you really want to splash the cash. Definitely worth a visit. Full stop. Yeah. What? Full stop. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> But yeah, that's the most popular place, along with a host of other little villages that you can visit in the surrounding area as well. So that is it for our little Coimbra stop and the local vicinity. Nice little taste for us of hopefully the little farm life living that we're going to have with some chickens in a garden, some nice fresh produce and creating some jams, chutneys and our own honey potentially. Great to see the family as per usual. Got to see more of the country, giving us a better idea every day of where we're going to look to lay our hats down. In coming video, we will be keeping an eye on changes to the D7 visa process. Have we heard that them have been changing recently? So if that is of interest to you, if you are moving here and think that will be helpful, drop us a sub, like and comment and thanks for watching.